And on the subject of our Salford extravaganza from a couple of weeks back, Cornish Darren says, well, exactly. Dear doctors, no. as I lay in hospital yesterday in my anaphylactic... <laughs> well, we hospitalised him. Yeah, no, well, just let me finish the text and you'll okay, get sorry. the full story. As I lay in hospital in my anaphylactic stupor yesterday, oh, unwashed and somewhat slightly dazed, all I could hear in my ringing ears was Midnight Cowboy. That was a reference to David Barry, something. Unwashed and somewhat slightly dazed is for the first day of round. I think he, what he's trying to do is just pay you a compliment and your extraordinary uh, chromatic harmonica playing. That's very kind. Okay. That's very kind. I have never been more scared in my life than doing that. He's, he's, uh, he's allergic to fish, I think, and it put him into a, an anaphylactic shock. Right. But with Midnight Cowboy in his ears, all was well. There were many comments on the, because it went up on YouTube and on the red button, and I think it was watched by a lot of people on the red button, many comments go, why does Mayo look so bored and unimpressed as you're doing that? The camera the op- wasn't on me. It, it, no, it, actually, to the which the answer are, is, go. that's the way I look. Exactly, to which the answer is, that's the you know, way he looks. That's, that's, that's just, it. That's, that's just so it. unfair. I know. You know, sorry Charles about, Hawtrey Sorry and about my orc. face. <laughs> Hawtrey and Orc, that's just the way it is. Ruth Gard on an email. In fact, I've carried this email around for. I took this up to Salford. I thought we might get a chance to do it there, uh, but I've I've kept hold of it. It's a bit tatty, but uh, we'll make the most of this. Dear Jack Sparrow and Angelica, I want to take issue with something Dr. K said during a recent podcast on the subject of spoilers. Oh yeah, he said there's, there are very few topics that provoke as Isn't much correspondence as this. Mm. He said that if there were a film in which a character had a brother. But who later uses a hypothetical? I did, yes. But your character had a brother, but who later proves not, not to, to be, be the brother. brother after all. His only option in reviewing the film would be to say someone who seems to be the brother, or someone who we assume to be the brother. Why is it not possible simply to say the brother, someone's brother, which is what he believed at the start of the film before the twist is revealed? Mm. Why can't you say there are plot twists, but I won't reveal their nature? That is to say, give a non-spoiler alert instead of the more usual spoiler alert. It did my head in. Shall I tell you the honest answer to that question? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a very good point. I worked for years and years. In fact, I'm still a, a contributing editor to Sight and Sound, the British Film Institute's magazine. And one of the things that they do when you write reviews for them is that you have to write a plot synopsis that runs alongside the review. So a synopsis of everything that happens in the film. And when you're writing those synopses, the general rule is that everything has to be factually... If you say somebody's somebody's brother and they're not, then you can't say they're the brother. You have to say... Even if that's what everyone thinks and you're supposed to think. Well, because the point is it's, it's meant to be like a legal document of right. what happens in the, and, and the... And the character isn't the brother. But you are quite right. Actually, the, it's, I, was, I was trying to illustrate an insurmountable problem, which is that you, you're either factually incorrect because the movie lead, you know, leads you... Or you're correct, but you annoy everybody. I mean, clearly... In how my, unlike you how to, go for, the to go for the latter option. 